Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we sit down with an expert about mental health in 2023. Plus, the Southwestern Virginia Sheriff's Office received a bomb threat that left that led to evacuations and someone behind bars. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. Six o'clock here on this Monday morning, January 2nd. Good morning to you. I'm Dakota Makris, and this is the first morning newscast of the new year. Let's head over to Braden for a look at our very Monday forecast. <laughs> it is, it's a, there's fog. The fog is in the, the station. I think morning. the fog is outside, inside. I mean, I just, we, we had a rough first mm. hour, but I think we're going to be okay now. Now you just jinx us. Thank you. No, I think we're going to be okay. okay. I've got some faith in it. <laughs> All right, let's take a look and see what's going on out there fog wise. And it is thick and dense, even in areas that are not showing up as fog this morning. I can tell you it's foggy down toward Harlan and Middlesbrough because you can see it coming across the border. There is a dense fog advisory for Claiborne and Campbell counties in East Tennessee this morning for a little while longer. And again, lots of areas that are showing no fog definitely have fog. Not on top of the mountains, though. Whitesburg Pine Mountain there, US 119, as a car comes over the mountain there. Not a whole lot of activity this morning. 30s, 40s, and 50s. 36, Clintwood. That's actually the only 36 there now because Manchester's up a degree to 55 in Somerset. That's your range, and you see a lot of warmer air surging in from the south ahead of this front. That's coming off of the Gulf of Mexico. 69 degrees right now, Huntsville, 65 in Memphis. All that kind of surging in there from our west, and we'll continue to see that trend until this front passes by. So, normal day to a little extra on your coffee meter. Here at home, we're going to soar too as we open the door up box there and start eating those you're going to see our temperatures climb into the upper 60s later today even though most of the day will feature overcast skies dakota all right brendan thank you many of us might be thinking of a few new year's resolutions we want to accomplish this year some of which we might see through and others we just may not our Alyssa williams talked with the mental health professional about the benefits of making new year's resolutions and how we can aim to make those goals come true whether it's to lose weight, to start a business, or to reduce stress, just setting these goals for the new year can benefit your well-being. There's a lot of benefits to setting goals for the new year, making New Year's resolutions. Uh, it's always good to have an idea of what you want to do or what you want to change or kind of pick certain aspects of your life that you want to focus on and improve on based on how the previous year was. Behavioral health specialist Dr. Jonathan Martin says the best way to stick to any New Year's resolution is to set realistic goals for yourself. Don't expect to run a marathon by the end of January. That's just not, if you haven't run a marathon before. So make sure that they're in the realm of possibility. And then also make sure that you give yourself enough leeway and flexibility that you can adjust those goals and you can meet yourself where you are when you're working to accomplish them. Dr. Martin says carrying out your goals takes time, so taking breaks to look back and evaluate your progress is okay. If you find yourself getting frustrated or bogged down by it, step back and reevaluate, take a minute from it and see, you know, what kinds of things have I done that have worked, what hasn't worked, what could I change? Is this a feasible or ideal goal now that, you know, some time has passed and I know more about what it's going to take and then kind of regroup and, and rework your goals to match where you are at that point in time. Helping each of us to make the most out of the new year. Alyssa Williams, WYMT Mountain News. Well, more children are ending up in emergency rooms for mental health crisis. A study in JAMA Pediatrics tracked more than 200,000 children seen at hospitals from 2015 to 2020 and found emergency room visits for mental health increased by 8% annually. 13% of patients revisited the hospital within six months. And if you're looking for a resolution for the new year, consider this. Don't get scammed. Advocates say scammers use a range of methods to trick people into giving up their money. One of many Medicare scams to prey on seniors, the Appalachian Agency for Senior Citizens operates as the Senior Medicare Patrol for Taswell, Russell, Buchanan, and Dickinson counties. Well, they say avoiding Medicare scams is often as simple as not giving away personal information over the phone. Uh, they can get information from databases that may have your birthday, or so it makes it seem like it might be real. Um, but again, we just we just encourage them if if you do have any questions, don't talk to that person. Call Medicare yourself and verify what information they do need from you. Well, the organization adds Medicare will never call you to ask for personal information. So if someone on the phone starts to pry. Just hang up. 
One sheriff's office in southwest Virginia had a bit of a scare. On Friday at around 3.30 p.m., the Wise County Sheriff's Office Dispatch Center received a call stating there were bombs planted at the Wise County Justice Center as well as the Wise County Courthouse. Wise County Sheriff's Deputy Sergeant Garth Nicely says both sites were evacuated, searched, and cleared by bomb-detecting canines. An arrest was made later that night. Later last night, I would assume after 6 p.m., I'm guessing, uh, they determined a suspect and I guess interviewed and took out charges on the subject. 42-year-old David Lee Graham of Wise County was arrested on two felony counts of making bomb threats and could be held liable for any expenses used during the response to his threats. Well, legendary Harlan County broadcaster Bill Ellis died Friday afternoon after battling a fire outside of his home. Our Chandler Wilcox details the impact Ellis had on the Harlan County community. She took it straight up into the defender's face and she got the foul. Bill Ellis was on the sidelines during many Harlan County High School games throughout his life. His voice echoed through the mountains. During the games, he, he always made it his focus on trying to uh, articulate and describe to the best of his ability what was going on. His impact, however, went beyond analysis. Three words that describe Bill Ellis best is blessed every day because that's what he told everyone when anyone asked him how he was doing. He was blessed every day. It didn't matter what kind of personal struggles he was going through. Bill's death came as a shock to the community as folks are still trying to process how Harlan County will be without him. Even when he stepped down because of health issues, Bill seemed invincible. I got the phone call and I'm still thinking, at worst, he's, he's wrecked or running the ditch. Never, um, never did I think this would be um, getting a call about Bill. Wow, he has now gone physically. That's really we got this lead, but we kind of got laxed in that latter part of the third quarter. Bill's legacy will still live on forever. I automatically think because he, he was on radio, that's how he got to know everybody. Bill knew everybody anyways. He, uh, he didn't meet a stranger. Harlan County High School plans to honor Bill Ellis with a moment of silence before their next girls and boys varsity basketball games. In Harlan County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Visitation for Bill Ellis will be held today from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the Harlan County High School Gymnasium. Six oh eight here on this Monday morning. We're tracking some temperatures that are a pretty good range out there and some fog this morning. Be extra careful. The school buses are back on the roads right now. 36 in Clintwood, 55 in Somerset. There are 30s, there are 40s, and there are 50s out there this morning. But temperatures are actually going up in some areas as you head out the door. Next six, uh, six hours there, basically you're going to take us into the 60s by 1 o'clock. And again, about 67 for a forecast high a little bit later on this afternoon. Unfortunately, we'll see some clouds, maybe a couple of stray showers there hinder our forecast as we head deeper into the daytime hours. Dakota? All right, Brennan, thank you so much. It's almost 609 when we come back here on Mountain News this morning. We take a look back on the life of a trailblazing journalist.